when you're separating your impression from the type of dot or whatever it is that you're taking the impression of, you want to do it in one quick snap, as you see right there. If this doesn't happen, you can take your fingers around the posterior teeth and try to just gently lift the impression a little bit uh, so as to let go of the vacuum suction sort of seal that the impression material forms around the structures. You want to check your impression for any tray burn, as you can see right there in the canine. And then you want to get it ready um, to be poured up uh, for a cast. Alginate impressions need to be poured up uh, generally as soon as possible. If you need to keep an alginate impression uh, to pour up later, you want to cover it with a moist paper towel. But to avoid any distortion, just pour it up immediately. In here, you can see me mixing the white lab plaster or fast set lab plaster as it's labeled in the fourth and third floor labs. Uh, the ratio of powder to water is two to one. So you take about 150 or 200 grams of powder with 100 grams of water, as I did here. You mix it roughly, uh, as you're seeing, with a spatula in your uh, rubber mixing bowl, at which point you'll take your impression, spray some emulsion spray. This is the Mizzy spray or the silicone Mizzy spray, uh, as it's labeled. Now you're going to be starting uh, the actual pour up. So before doing anything, find a machine that has a vibrator, like uh, the vacuum mix machines here or the vibrators anywhere. And you want to mix the plaster there before you start pouring up your cast. Once you have your impression on the vibrator, as you can see here, you want to incline it downward, take a little bit of plaster and put it at the distal most corner. So in this particular case, uh, I started at the second molar and I'm going to let the plaster flow down gently covering the surface of the impression as it moves from tooth to tooth. You change the incline once it reaches around halfway to the central incisors and now you're going to let it slide all the way down. You can see it covering the first molar here and now the plaster is gently slowly going into the second molar. What we're using here is a property known as thixotropy. And thixotropy is the property which states that plaster or other gypsum materials uh, will be more mobile and more amenable to moving when they are being vibrated. Plaster, uh, as you can see when I picked it up off the bowl, is actually pretty rigid and it'll just maintain the shape that your spatula has or the bowl has. But when you place it on one of these machines that can vibrate, the plaster will actually uh, be more compliant and fill the spaces as opposed to simply uh, maintaining the shape you originally gave it. Once you're done with this, you take a little bit of water to smooth out the top. This is entirely optional um, and this increases the setting time of the stone, but it's something that I generally do in order to make the trimming of the cast later a little easier. Plaster takes about 10 minutes to set. Now, when you're removing the plaster cast from the impression, you can try to lift it directly out, but generally this tends to be a little difficult. Since alginate impressions cannot be poured up multiple times, it's easy to simply rip the alginate off of the sides and then very carefully separate the plaster, not applying too much torque. You can get rid of your impression and inspect the cast. In this case, the cast seems fairly good, but we need to make sure that it is of the right dimensions and shape. So you take it to this machine, which is the model trimmer, and you, we're simply going to make sure that the cast follows uh, the teeth. Uh, since this was taken on a Typodon, the shape it currently possesses is that of the Typodon. We're going to get rid of this and cut it down such that it is going to resemble more of what a patient cast would look like, so more round in shape. This particular machine is very aggressive with plaster, but it's a little less aggressive with improved stone or improved dye stone, um, which are yellow and blue, respectively. At the end, you want to flatten the bottom surface to make sure that your cast will sit flush with the ground. Um, and then wash your cast one final time to get rid of any plaster sludge that uh, accumulated while you were trimming the model itself.
After briefly drying the cast, you inspect it for any blebs or positive nodules on the cast. In this particular case, uh, luckily I didn't get too many, uh, but if you do, you take a clear discord and you remove them.